Demographics of Germany The demography of Germany is monitored by the Statistisches Bundesamt, Federal Statistical Office of Germany. According to the first census since reunification, Germany's population was 82,790,700, September 31, 2017, making it the 16th most populous country in the world and the most populous in the European Union. The total fertility rate was rated at 1.59 in 2016, the highest value since 1972, and in 2011, was even estimated at 1.6 after accounting for the fact that older women contribute more to the number of births than in previous statistic models, and total fertility rates increased in younger generations. In 2008, fertility was related to educational achievement. Women with lower levels of education were having more children than women who had completed higher education. In 2011, this was no longer true for Eastern Germany where higher educated women now had a somewhat higher fertility rate compared to the rest of the population. Persons who said they had no religion tend to have fewer children than this will identify as Christians, and studies also found that amongst Christians, the more conservative ones had more children compared to the more liberal ones. In vitro fertilization, IVF, is legal in Germany, with an age limit set at 40 years. As of 2006, 55.7% of Germans age 18 and over were married. According to the 2008 to 2010 German Community Survey three year estimates, 51.5% of males and 47.7% of females over the age of 15 were married. The separation rate was 6 per 10 marriages. The United Nations Population Fund lists Germany as host to the second highest number of international migrants worldwide. Behind the United States. More than 16 million people are descended from immigrants, first and second generation, including mixed heritage and ethnic German repatriates and their descendants. 96.1% of those reside in Western Germany and Berlin. About 7 million of them are foreign residents, which is defined as those not having German citizenship. The largest ethnic group of non German origin are the Turkish. Since the 1960s, West and later reunified Germany has been attracting immigrants primarily from southern and eastern Europe as well as Turkey, many of whom, or their children, acquired German citizenship over time. While most of these immigrants initially arrived as guest workers, Germany has also been a prime destination for refugees who have applied for asylum in Germany, in part because the German constitution long had a clause guaranteeing political asylum as a human right, but restrictions over the years have since limited scope. Germany has one of the world's highest levels of education, technological development, and economic productivity. Since the end of World War II, the number of students entering university has more than tripled, and the trade and technical schools are among the world's best. With a per capita PPP income of about $41,370 in 2012, Germany is a broadly middle class society. However, there has been a strong increase in the number of children living in poverty. Whereas in 1965, 1 in 75 children was on the welfare rolls. By 2007, 1 child in 6 was on the welfare rolls, although these children live in relative poverty, but not necessarily in absolute poverty. Germans are typically very well-traveled people, with millions traveling overseas each year. The social welfare system provides for universal health care, unemployment compensation, child benefits and other social programs. Due to Germany's aging population and struggling economy, the welfare system came under a lot of strain in the 1990s. This led the government to adopt a wide-ranging program of belt-tightening reforms, Agenda 2010, including the labor market reforms known as Hartz I, for The contemporary demographics of Germany are also measured by a series of full censuses, with the most recent held in 1987. Since reunification, German authorities rely on a micro-census. The total fertility rate is the number of children born per woman. It is based on fairly good data for the entire period. Sources, Our World in Data and Gatminder Foundation. Sources, Our World in Data and the United Nations. 1875 to 1950. 1950 to 2015. Source, UN World Population Prospects. Population statistics since 1900. Territorial changes of Germany occurred in 1918-1919. 1921-1922, 1945-1946 and in 1990. After the World War II border shifts and expulsions, the Germans from Central and Eastern Europe and the former Eastern territories moved westward to post-war Germany. 
During the partition of Germany, many Germans from East Germany fled to West Germany for political and also economic reasons. Since Germany's reunification, there are ongoing migrations from the Eastern New Lender to the Western Old Lender for economic reasons. The Federal Republic of Germany and the German Democratic Republic followed different paths when it came to demographics. The politics of the German Democratic Republic was pro-natalistic while that of the Federal Republic was compensatory. Fertility in the GDR was higher than that in the FRG. Demographic politics was only one of the reasons. Women in the GDR had fewer biographic options, young motherhood was expected of them. State-funded cost-free child care was available to all mothers. Note. Berlin is included into East Germany for the year 2002 and 2008. Source, Krayenfeld, 2002, Krayenfeld et al. 2010, HFD Germany, 2010. About 1.7 million people have left the new federal states since the fall of the Berlin Wall, or 12% of the population, a disproportionately high number of theme were a women under 35. After 1990, the total fertility rate, TFR, in the East dropped to 0.772 in 1994. This has been attributed to the fact that there was a demographic shock, people not only had fewer children, they also were less likely to marry or divorce after the end of the GDR, the biographic options of the citizens of the former GDRAD increased. Young motherhood seemed to be less attractive and the age of the first birth rose sharply. In the following years, the TFR in the East Germany started rising again surpassing 1.0 in 1997 and 1 1.3 in 2004, reaching the West's TFR in 2007, 1.37. In 2010, the East's fertility rate, 1.459, clearly exceeded that of the West, 1.385, while Germany's overall TFR has risen to 1.393, the highest value since 1990, which was still far below the natural replacement rate of 2.1 and the birth rate seen under communism. In 2016, the TFR of East Germany was 1.64, while TFR in the West, 1.60. Between 1989 and 2009, about 2,000 schools closed because of a scarcity of children. In some regions, the number of women between the ages of 20 and 30 has dropped by more than 30%. In 2004, in the age group 18 to 29, Statistically important for starting families, there were only 90 women for every 100 men in the new federal states, including Berlin. Until 2007 family politics in the Federal Republic was compensatory, which means that poor families received more family benefits, such as the Erzsehungsgeld than rich ones. In 2007 the so-called Elterngeld was introduced. According to Christoph Butterwick the Elterngeld was meant to motivate highly educated women to have more children. The poor on the other hand were disadvantaged by the Altengeld, receiving now fewer child benefits than the middle classes. The very well off, who earn more than 250.000 euro per annum, and those on welfare receive no Altengeld payments. In 2013 the following most recent developments were noticed. In the new federal states the birth rate of college-educated women is now higher than that of those without college degrees. Differences in value priorities and the better availability of child care in the eastern states are discussed as a possible reason. Demographic statistics according to the World Population Review. Demographic statistics according to the CIA World Factbook, unless otherwise indicated. While most childbirths in Germany happen within marriage, a growing number of children are born out of wedlock. In 2010 the out-of-wedlock rate was 33%, more than twice of what it was in 1990. The microsensis done in 2008 revealed that the number of children a German woman aged 40 to 75 had, was closely linked to her educational achievement. In Western Germany the most educated women were the most likely to be childless. 26% of those groups stated they were childless, while 16% of those having an intermediate education, and 11% of those having compulsory education, stated the same. In Eastern Germany, however, 9% of the most educated women of that age group and 7% of those who had an intermediary education were childless, while 12% of those having only compulsory education were childless. The reason for that East-Western difference is that the GDR had an educated mother scheme and actively tried to encourage first births among the more educated. It did so by propagandizing the opinion that every educated woman should present at least one child to socialism and also by financially rewarding its more educated citizen to become parents. 
The government especially tried to persuade students to become parents while still in college and it was quite as successful in doing so. In 1986 38% of all women, who were about to graduate from college, were mothers of at least one child and additional 14% were pregnant and 43% of all men, who were about to graduate from college, were fathers of at least one child. There was a sharp decline in the birth rate and especially in birth rate of the educated after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Nowadays, 5% of those about to graduate from college are parents. The more educated a Western German mother aged 40 to 75 was in 2008, the less likely she was to have a big family. The same was true for a mother living in Eastern Germany in 2008. A study done in 2005 in the Western German state of Nordrhein-Westfalen by the HDC revealed that childlessness was especially widespread among scientists. It showed that 78% of the women scientists and 71% of the male scientists working in that state were childless. The Federal Statistical Office defines persons with a migrant background as all persons who migrated to the present area of the Federal Republic of Germany after 1949, plus all foreign nationals born in Germany and all persons born in Germany as German nationals with at least one parent who migrated to Germany or was born in Germany as a foreign national. The figures presented here are based on this definition only. In 2010, 2.3 million families with children under 18 years were living in Germany in which at least one parent had foreign roots. They represented 29% of the total of 8.1 million families with minor children. Compared with 2005, the year when the microcensus started to collect detailed information on the population with a migrant background, the proportion of migrant families has risen by 2 percentage points. In 2015, 36% children under 5 years old had migrant background. Number includes ethnic German repatriates. Most of the families with a migrant background live in the western part of Germany. In 2010, the proportion of migrant families in all families was 32% in the former territory of the Federal Republic. This figure was more than double that in the new lender, including Berlin, where it stood at 15%. Families with a migrant background more often have three or more minor children in the household than families without a migrant background. In 2010, about 15% of the families with a migrant background contain three or more minor children, as compared with just 9% of the families without a migrant background. In 2009, 3.0 million of the persons of immigrant background had Turkish roots, 2.9 million had their roots in the successor states of the Soviet Union, including a large number of Russian-speaking ethnic Germans, 1.5 million had their roots in the successor states of Yugoslavia including 200.000 Albanians and 1.5 million had Polish roots. In 2008, 18.4% of Germans of any age group and 30% of German children had at least one parent born abroad. Median age for Germans with at least one parent born abroad was 33.8 years, while that for Germans, who had two parents born in Germany was 44.6 years. Germany is home to the third highest number of international migrants worldwide after the United States and Saudi Arabia. The population by background was as follows. Four other sizable groups of people are referred to as national minorities, national Minderheiten, because they have lived in their respective regions for centuries. Danes, Frisians, Roma, and Sindhi, and Sorbs. There is a Danish minority, about 50,000, according to government sources, in the northernmost state of Schleswig-Holstein. Eastern and northern Frisians live at Schleswig-Holstein's western coast, and in the northwestern part of Lower Saxony. They are part of a wider community, Frisia, stretching from Germany to the northern Netherlands. The Sorbs, a Slavic people with about 60,000 members, according to government sources, are in the Lusatia region of Saxony and Brandenburg. They are the last remnants of the Slavs that lived in central and eastern Germany since the 7th century to have kept their traditions and not been completely integrated into the wider German nation. Until World War II the Poles were recognized as one of the national minorities. In 1924 the Union of Poles in Germany had initiated cooperation between all national minorities in Germany under the umbrella organization Association of National Minorities in Germany. Some of the Union members wanted the Polish communities in easternmost Germany, now Poland, to join the newly established Polish nation after World War I. Even before the German invasion of Poland, leading anti-Nazi members of the Polish minority were deported to concentration camps, 
some were executed at the Piasnica murder site. Minority rights for Poles in Germany were revoked by Hermann Göring's World War II decree of February 27, 1940, and their property was confiscated. After the war ended, the German government did not re-implement national minority rights for ethnic Poles. The reason for this is that the areas of Germany which formerly had a native Polish minority were annexed to Poland and the Soviet Union, while almost all of the native German populations, formerly the ethnic majority, in these areas subsequently fled or were expelled by force. With the mixed German-Polish territories now lost, the German government subsequently regarded ethnic Poles residing in what remained of Germany as immigrants, just like any other ethnic population with a recent history of arrival. In contrast, Germans living in Poland are recognized as national minority and have granted seats in Polish parliament. It must be said, however, that an overwhelming number of Germans in Poland have centuries old historical ties to the lands they now inhabit, whether from living in territory that once belonged to the German state, or from centuries old communities. In contrast, most Poles in present-day Germany are recent immigrants, though there are some communities which have been present since the 19th and perhaps even the 18th centuries. Despite protests by some in the older Polish German communities, and despite Germany being now a signatory to the Framework Convention for the Protection of National Minorities, Germany has so far refused to re-implement minority rights for ethnic Poles, based on the fact that almost all areas of historically mixed German-Polish heritage, where the minority rights formerly existed, are no longer part of Germany and because the vast majority of ethnic Poles now residing in Germany are recent immigrants. Roma people have been in Germany since the Middle Ages. They were persecuted by the Nazis, and thousands of Roma living in Germany were killed by the Nazi regime. Nowadays, they are spread all over Germany, mostly living in major cities. It is difficult to estimate their exact number, as the German government counts them as persons without migrant background in their statistics. There are also many assimilated Sinti and Roma. A vague figure given by the German Department of the Interior is about 70,000. In the late 1990s, many Roma moved to Germany from Kosovo. In contrast to the old established Roma population, the majority of them do not have German citizenship, they are classified as immigrants or refugees. After World War II, 14 million ethnic Germans were expelled from the eastern territories of Germany and homelands outside the former German Empire. The accommodation and integration of these Heimatvertrieben in the remaining part of Germany, in which many cities and millions of apartments had been destroyed, was a major effort in the post war occupation zones and later states of Germany. Since the 1960s, ethnic Germans from the People's Republic of Poland and Soviet Union, especially from Kazakhstan, Russia, and Ukraine, have come to Germany. During the time of perestroika, and after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the number of immigrants increased heavily. Some of these immigrants are of mixed ancestry. During the 10 year period between 1987 and 2001, a total of 1,981,732 ethnic Germans from the FSU immigrated to Germany, along with more than a million of their non German relatives. After 1997, However ethnic Slavs or those belonging to Slavic Germanic mixed origin sat numbered these with only Germanic descent amongst the immigrants. The total number of people currently living in Germany having FSEU connection is around 4 to 4.5 million, including Germans, Slavs, Jews and those of mixed origins, out of that more than 50% is of German descent. Germany now has Europe's third largest Jewish population. In 2004, twice as many Jews from former Soviet republics settled in Germany as in Israel, bringing the total inflow to more than 100,000 since 1991. Jews have a voice in German public life through the Central Council of Jews in Germany, Zentralrat or Juden in Deutschland. Some Jews from the former Soviet Union are of mixed heritage. In 2000 there were also around 300,000 to 500,000 Afro-Germans, those who have German citizenship and 150,000 plus African nationals. Most of them live in Berlin and Hamburg. Numerous persons from Tunisia and Morocco live in Germany. While they are considered members of a minority group, for the most part, they do not consider themselves Afro-Germans, nor are most of them perceived as such by the German people. However, Germany does not keep any statistics regarding ethnicity or race. Hence, the exact number of Germans of African descent is unknown. Germany's biggest East Asian minority are the Vietnamese people in Germany. About 40,000 Vietnamese live in Berlin and surroundings. Also, there are about 20,000 to 25,000 Japanese people residing in Germany. 
Some South Asian and Southeast Asian immigration has taken place. Nearly 50,000 Indians live in Germany. As of 2008, there were 68,000 Filipino residents and an unknown number of Indonesians residing in Germany. Numerous descendants of the so called Gastarbeiter live in Germany. The Gastarbeiter mostly came from Chile, Greece, southern Italy, Morocco, Portugal, Spain, Tunisia, Turkey, and the former Yugoslavia. Also included were Vietnam. Mongolia, North Korea, Angola, Mozambique and Cuba when the former East Germany existed until reunification in 1990. The Socialist German Democratic Republic, East Germany, however had their guest workers stay in single-sex dormitories. Female guest workers had to sign contracts saying that they were not allowed to fall pregnant during their stay. If they fell pregnant nevertheless they facied forced abortion or deportation. This is one of the reasons why the vast majority of ethnic minorities today lives in Western Germany and also one of the reasons we minorities such as the Vietnamese have the most unusual population pyramid, with nearly all second-generation Vietnamese Germans born after 1989. The numbers of selected groups of resident foreign nationals, non-naturalized residents, in Germany were as follows. This list does not include foreigners with German nationality and foreign nationals without resident status. The most common Y chromosome haplogroups among German males are haplogroup R1b, followed by haplogroup I1, and haplogroup R1a. With an estimated more than 81.8 million inhabitants in late 2011, Germany is the most populous country in the European Union and ranks as the 16th largest country in the world in terms of population. Its population density stands at 229.4 inhabitants per square kilometer. Germany comprises 16 states that are collectively referred to as Länder. Due to differences in size and population the subdivision of these states varies, especially between city-states, Stadtstaaten, and states with larger territories, Flak and Länder. For regional administrative purposes five states, namely Baden-Württemberg, Bavaria, Hesse, North Rhine-Westphalia and Saxony, consist of a total of 22 government districts, Regie Rungsbezirk. As of 2009 Germany is divided into 403 districts, Kreise, on municipal level, these consist of 301 rural districts and 102 urban districts. Germany officially has 11 metropolitan regions. In 2005, Germany had 82 cities with more than 100,000 inhabitants. Over 10 million people living in Germany today were born outside of Germany equivalent to 12% of the German population. Most immigrants come from other European countries, particularly from Turkey, Russia, Poland, and Italy. Germany is the second most popular destination for immigrants in the world after the United States. The German government has been keen to encourage immigration over the past 50 years. Germany had signed special visa agreements with several countries in times of severe labor shortages or when particular skills were deficient within the country. During the 1960s and 1970s, agreements were signed with the governments of Turkey, Yugoslavia, Italy, and Spain to help Germany overcome its severe labor shortage. As of 2012, the largest sources of net immigration to Germany are other European countries, most importantly, Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, Italy. Spain, and Greece. Notably, in the case of Turkey, German Turks moving to Turkey slightly outnumber new immigrants. In 2015, there were 476,649 asylum applications. Responsibility for educational oversight in Germany lies primarily with the individual federated states. Since the 1960s, a reform movement has attempted to unify secondary education into a Jessam Chul, comprehensive school. Several West German states later simplified their school systems to two or three years. A system of apprenticeship called duale Ausbildung, dual education, allows pupils in vocational training to learn in a company as well as in a state-run vocational school. Optional kindergarten education is provided for all children between three and six years old, after which school attendance is compulsory for at least nine years. Primary education usually lasts for four years and public schools are not stratified at this stage. In contrast, secondary education includes three traditional types of schools focused on different levels of academic ability. The gymnasium enrolls the most academically promising children and prepares students for university studies. The real school for intermediate students lasts six years. The Hauptschule prepares pupils for vocational education. In addition, Germany has a comprehensive school known as the Jessam Schule. 
while some German schools such as the Gymnasium and the Realschule have rather strict entrance requirements, the Jesumschule does not have such requirements. They offer college preparatory classes for the students who are doing well, general education classes for average students, and remedial courses for those who aren't doing that well. In most cases students attending a Jesumschule may graduate with the Hauptschulabschluss, the Realschulabschluss or the Abitur depending on how well they did in school. The percentage of students attending a Jessam Chul varies by Bundesland. In 2007 the state of Brandenburg more than 50% of all students attended a Jessam Chul, while in the state of Bavaria less than 1% did. The general entrance requirement for university is a bitcher, a qualification normally based on continuous assessment during the last few years at school and final examinations, however there are a number of exceptions, and precise requirements vary, depending on the state. The university and the subject. Germany's universities are recognized internationally, in the Academic Ranking of World Universities, ARWU, for 2008, six of the top 100 universities in the world are in Germany, and 18 of the top 200. Nearly all German universities are public institutions, tuition fees in the range of 500 euros were introduced in some states after 2006, but quickly abolished again until 2014. Percentage of job holders holding Hauptschulabschluss, Realschulabschluss or Abitur in Germany. Over 99% of those of age 15 and above are estimated to be able to read and write. However, a growing number of inhabitants are functionally illiterate. The young are much more likely to be functionally illiterate than the old. According to a study done by the University of Bremen in cooperation with the Bundesverband Alphabetisierung EB, 10% of youngsters living in Germany are functionally illiterate and one quarter are able to understand only basic level texts. Illiteracy rates of youngsters vary by ethnic group and parents' socioeconomic class. The principal cause of death was cardiovascular disease, at 42%, followed by malignant tumors, at 25%. About 82,000 Germans had been infected with HIV slash AIDS and 26,000 had died from the disease, cumulatively, since 1982. According to a 2005 survey, 27% of German adults are smokers. A 2009 study shows Germany is near the median in terms of overweight and obese people in Europe. The national constitutions of 1919 and 1949 guarantee freedom of faith and religion. Earlier, these freedoms were mentioned only in state constitutions. The modern constitution of 1949 also states that no one may be discriminated against due to their faith or religious opinions. A state church does not exist in Germany. See Freedom of Religion in Germany. According to a 1990s poll by Der Spiegel, 45% of Germans believe in God, and a quarter in Jesus Christ. According to the Eurobarometer poll 2010, 44% of German citizens responded that they believe there is a God. 25% responded that they believe there is some sort of spirit or life force and 27% responded that they don't believe there is any sort of spirit, God or life force. 4% gave no response. Christianity is the largest religion in Germany, comprising an estimated 57.9% of the country's population. Islam is the second largest religion in Germany, with an estimated 6.1% of the population according to a 2017 Pew Research survey. Germany has the second largest Muslim population in Europe, at nearly 5 million, and is expected to grow significantly in the coming decade. Smaller religious groups, less than 1%, include Judaism, Buddhism, and Hinduism. The two largest churches, the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Evangelical Church in Germany, EKD have lost significant number of adherents. In 2016 the Catholic Church accounted for 28.5% and the Evangelical Church for 26.5% of the population. Other Christian churches and groups summed up to 3.3% with estimations for the Orthodox Church between 1.3% and 1.9%. Since the reunification of Germany, the number of non-religious people has grown and an estimated 36.2% of the country's population are not affiliated with any church or religion. The other religions make up to less than 1% of the population. Buddhism has around 200,000 adherents, 0.2%, Judaism has around 200.000 adherents, 0.2%, Hinduism 90,000, 0.1%, Sikhism 75,000, 0.1% and Yazidis religion, 45,000 to 60,000. All other religious communities in Germany have fewer than 50,000, 
less than 0.1%. Adherence.Protestantism is concentrated in the North and East and Roman Catholicism is concentrated in the South and West. According to the last nationwide census, Protestantism is more widespread among the population with German citizenship. There are slightly more Catholics total because of the Catholic immigrant population, including such groups as Poles and Italians. The former Pope, Benedict XVI, was born in Bavaria. Non-religious people, including atheists and agnostics, might make up as many as 55% of the total population, and are especially numerous in the former East Germany and major metropolitan areas. Of the roughly 4 million Muslims, most are Sunnis and Olivites from Turkey, but there are a small number of Shiites and other denominations. 1.3% of the country's overall population declare themselves Orthodox Christians, with Serbs, Greeks, Montenegrins, Ukrainians and Russians being the most numerous. Germany has Europe's third largest Jewish population, after France and the United Kingdom. In 2004, twice as many Jews from former Soviet republics settled in Germany as in Israel, bringing the total Jewish population to more than 200,000. Compared to 30,000 prior to German reunification. Large cities with significant Jewish populations include Berlin, Frankfurt, and Munich. Around 250,000 active Buddhists live in Germany, 50% of them are Asian immigrants. Census results were as follows. German is the only official and most widely spoken language. Standard German is understood throughout the country. Danish, Low German, Low Rhenish, the Sorbian languages, Lower Sorbian and Upper Sorbian, and the two Frisian languages, Satterfrisian and North Frisian, are officially recognized and protected as minority languages by the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages in their respective regions. With speakers of Romani living in all parts of Germany, the federal government has promised to take action to protect the language. Until now, only Hesse has followed Berlin's announcement and agreed on implementing concrete measures to support Romani speakers. Implementation of the Charter is poor. The monitoring reports on charter implementation in Germany show many provisions unfulfilled. German dialects, some quite distinct from the standard language, are used in everyday speech, especially in rural regions. Many dialects, for example the Upper German varieties, are to some degree cultivated as symbols of regional identity and have their own literature, theaters, and some TV programming. While speaking a dialect outside its native region might be frowned upon, in their native region some dialects can be spoken by all social classes. Nevertheless, partly due to the prevalence of standard German in media, the use of dialects has declined over the past century, especially in the younger population. The social status of different German dialects can vary greatly. The Alemannic and Bavarian dialects of the South are positively valued by their speakers and can be used in almost all social circumstances. The Saxonian and Thuringian dialects have less prestige and are subject to derision. While Bavarian and Alemannic have kept much of their distinctiveness, the Middle German dialects, which are closer to Standard German, have lost some of their distinctive lexical and grammatical features and tend to be only pronunciation variants of Standard German. Low Saxon is officially recognized as a language on its own, but despite this fact, there's little official action taken on fostering the language. Historically, one third of Germany's territory and population was Low Saxon speaking. No data was ever collected on the actual number of speakers, but today the number of speakers ranges around 5 million persons. Despite this relatively high number of speakers, there is very little coverage in the media, mostly on NDR TV, no regular programming and very little education in or on the language. The language is not fixed as part of the school curriculum and Low Saxon is used as a medium of instruction in one school only in the whole Germany, as a model project in primary school cited by education in Standard German. As a consequence the younger generation refused to adopt the native language of their parents. Language prevalence dropped from more than 90% depending on the exact region, in the 1930s to less than 5% today. This accounts for a massive intergenerational gap in language use. Older people regularly use the language and take private initiative to maintain the language, but the lack of innovative potential of the younger generation hinders language maintenance. The language too has an own literature, around 150 published books every year, and there are many theaters, mostly lay stages, but some professional ones, like for example own Sorg Theater. Use of Low Saxon is mainly restricted to use among acquaintances, like family members, neighbors and friends. A meeting of a village council can be held almost completely in Low Saxon if all participants know each other, 
as long as written protocols are written in standard German, but a single foreigner can make the whole switching to standard German. The Low Saxon dialects are different in their status too. There's a north-south gradient in language maintenance. The southern dialects of Westphalian, Eastphalian and Brandenburgish have had much stronger speaker losses than the northern coastal dialects of northern Low Saxon. While Eastphalian has lost speakers to Standard German, Westphalian has lost speakers to Standard German and Standard German-based regiolect of the Rhine Ruhrria. Brandenburgish speakers mostly switched to the Standard German-based regiolect of Berlin. Brandenburgish is almost completely replaced by the Berlin regiolect. Northern Low Saxon speakers switched mostly to pure Standard German. English is the most common foreign language and almost universally taught by the secondary level. It is also taught at elementary level in some states. Other commonly taught languages are French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and Russian. Dutch is taught in states bordering the Netherlands, and Polish in the eastern states bordering Poland. Latin and ancient Greek are part of the classical education syllabus offered in many secondary schools. According to a 2004 survey, Two-thirds of Germany's citizens have at least basic knowledge of English. About 20% consider themselves to be competent speakers of French, followed by speakers of Russian, 7%, Italian, 6.1%, and Spanish, 5.6%. The relatively high number of Russian speakers is a result of massive immigration from the former Soviet Union to Germany for almost 10 consecutive years, plus it's having been learned in school by many older former East Germans. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.